magandang magandang araw. This is Coach John Rania from the Ghost University and we have of course sa aking co-host Josel Gaston here. Maraming salamat for introducing me, John. It's a wonderful weekend that we experience. I know it's mm. still Mother's Day there today in your time zone. That's so right. Mother's Day to your lovely wife and to your mother. Ganun din sa iyong wife uh, na sa mga hindi nakakaalam, a eh, classmate ko high school, schoolmate ko actually, and very special ang ating uh, uh, interview today. It's like a Mother's Day special because we yes. have si Coach Wenda or Wanda rather, Gwendolyn Tan Kalupig and uh, she will uh, ex- help us and explain to us how she, her advocacy, advocacy are helping moms uh, really ma overcome yung kanilang stress especially mga working moms you know you know those feelings guys go hindi natin nararamdaman Josel eh, no <laughs> yung maraming responsibility sa mga nanay eh. Tama? oh true we may always claim to be very busy but you know the phrase or the term working mom is repetitive because moms really work That's i say right. they say better than us diba Exactly, absolutely. So, hindi ko na patatagalan. Of course, we would like to welcome our coach for today. And now uh, we will talk about a happy wife is a happy life. Happy moms raise happy kids with coach Wanda. Magandang araw sa iyo. Magandang araw sa iyo, Wanda. Good morning. Magandang araw. Thank you, John. At saka thank you, Joseph, for this opportunity. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Wanda, I believe... Uh, ikaw ay currently nasa Dubai. Ako po ay nasa Canada. And si Giselle, of course, ay nasa Manila. So, makikita niyo naman ang power of technology. Oo oh, naman. Iba-ibang time zone yan. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so, Wanda, can you give us a little bit more about your background para do sa mga nakikinig at o, of course, yung mga bagay na hindi ko pa nabanggit? Sige. I am a wife to my husband, Robert, a mom to my two children, and I'm also the founder, lead coach, and trainer for Working Moms Academy. Uh, Working Moms Academy, it is one of the finalists of the 2020 Built to Last Hackathon. It's the first ever hackathon in Southeast Asia in 2020. And it is the mission of Working Moms Academy to help moms overcome stress and burnout so moms can really, you know, raise happy children. And together to the community and training and coaching, we help moms become better parents, partner, and people. So it, it's it's really my legacy project because I've been, you know, I've suffered from burnout myself and I want to save moms from that stress and burnout I've been through. So... That, that's how it started. <laughs> Ayan. Of course, marami dyan, mga nanay. They really need this. And if you're moms or even if you're a husband, right? Mm-hmm. One yeah. way to help your wife is to understand the situation because magkaibang lalaki talaga at babae. There will be differences. Eh? In as much as we love each other, magkaiba pa rin talaga. Eh? So one of the best way that we could help our family And our wife is first understand their situation. Na maaring may mga bagay na, you know, ako po bilang isang husband and have three kids as well. Same with Jocelle, almost parehong pareho rin kami. Um, may mga bagay kasi na maybe for you, it's not, uh, it's not a big deal. But for your wife, it's a big deal. Ito yung po yung pag-uusapan natin. So binanggit mo kanina, Wanda. You talk about na parang ikaw yung pinagdaanan mo. That's why this has become your legacy a uh, project or a campaign or should we say advocacy to help these moms because you've been there and uh, you've experienced the pain and the challenges. Can you give us a little bit more of the details, ma- if you can, <laughs> na mga so, dinaanan yeah. mo and then it's like, you know what? <laughs> This is over. I'm going to help other women. I'm, I'm sure, you know, you have those like aha moment. Eh. Tama. True, true. So it was 2014. I was at the peak of my corporate career because I was the audit manager of Emirates Airlines in Dubai. So that time, really, I, mean, I was only one of the 10 or 17 managers in, in the whole Emirates area out of 5,000 employees. You know, I was really at everything I've wished and asked for is with me already, like career check, family check, husband check. So at that point in time, I was thinking... Lagi ako, I was always, you know, at that point, I was unhappy. I was also sickly. And I was stressed for no reason. I've always loved my job. But at those moments, I was like really questioning, there's something missing which I cannot explain myself. So I went into retail shopping. 
<laughs> and then nga, I was always sick. Doctors cannot find out. I was passing on the sickness to my children as well. And at, you know, at one time I remember my husband asked me the question, are we okay? Because, you know, when the wife is not okay, you, I mean, not only yourself, but the members of your family start to become affected already. Then I told my husband, uh, we are okay, but I am not okay. I need to find myself. So I was telling him, give me the time to find myself. So that is when I started to attend one training after another. That made me understand, you know, what am I really missing in my life? And one of the things that really opened my mind is when my NLP training, when I attended, it totally helped me understand how my mind and my heart and my body is all connected and where it is all coming from. And secondly, mm -hmm. you know, when Bo Sanchez came here in Dubai in 2014, he had the spiritual conference, Kerigma, Kerigma conference. He, there was people sharing on stage saying, uh, you know, God, show, God spoke to them. One was trying to kill herself. The other person was dying. Sabi nila, God spoke to them. You know, when they were speaking, I had so much doubt in my mind. I said, you know, I've always been faithful and prayerful, but God never spoke to me. That time, I heard the voice in my head. Sabi niya, serve me now, serve me now, serve me now. I was so scared. I was crying the whole conference. And that is when I was... You know, I started to just volunteer myself to do something that I can do to help. And that led me to training and coaching. So, and, and that really changed my life in many ways because as I help a lot of people, I change and help them find their career, heal their relationships. And I, I really vowed to God, now let me now use this gift and knowledge that I have an experience that I've been through to now help others before me. Because it's very difficult to be in that stage where, you know, you don't know what's happening around you. How can you really control, you know, and change the emotions that you have? And especially, nga, the, I mean, the health itself is mental, physical, emotional. And if you don't get it right, someday, somehow, you know, there's always going to be imbalance in some areas of your life. Absolutely. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned, you know, your connect connection, you know, mental, physical, emotional. That that is like hundred percent, hundred percent true because that's one of the things also that I teach is to have a you know, balanced life, right? So in your case, and for personally, and for helping other moms as well. So I'm assuming you're primarily focused on professional moms, tamabago those. People, moms with full-time job that they have to take care of their careers and jobs and take care of their kids and take care of their, you know, yung day-to-day -day life nila as a whole family. Ano ang typically, in your experience, yung mga top three, should I say, causes of stress for moms? Number one, it's the lack of time. So, right, especially working moms, they said we work double, triple shift. Mm. <laughs> we work in the office, then when you arrive at home, right, of course, the kids calling is there and then the household chores are there. So it's always about what do I need to do first? A lot of mothers struggle with time management. And second also, it's also emotional management, right? At some point in time, you will experience, I mean, you believe at some point in time, just because you're a working mom, the stress is the price that you have to pay for being that. And, mm -hmm. and also there's, you know, a lot of confusion and emotional guilt as well in terms of, am I giving my children the best that I could? Because, you know, when you're, when you're working, you really, I mean, you miss a lot of moments and milestones in your kid's life. And that's the right. guilt is something that's very difficult. Actually, I left my job in 2016. And I always had the guilt that I felt that I'm not a good housewife or I felt that I am not a good mother because I'm not at home. So I left really my corporate job in 2016. I left everything behind. Thankfully, my wish to be a housewife was answered to my husband's relocation. So from Dubai, we moved to Malaysia. But you know, if you've been working for 16 years then, and then you got stuck being at home, I was like, oh no, this is not meant for me either. So from then, that's how also I started my own company. I, I actually have my training and consultancy company in the Philippines. In 2018, I started that, Kaltan Training and Consultancy. But also, you know, I believe God, God always moves you in many ways. So something happened lang in the Philippines in 2000. There was an earthquake and attempted rabbit same day, noong 2019. So, you know, if you've been 
not there in the Philippines for quite some time. And, you know, you, you start to be threatened by what's happening. So I was telling my husband, and we had the conversation, you know, we cannot sacrifice our, our children's safety and security. So that's why we moved back to Dubai in 2019. So thankfully then, you know, if I look back, I, I am very happy that we're here during the lockdown because the government really handled it well. So I can speak a lot. Stop me <laughs> if you need to. But I think really it's, if you ask me that, Time is one of the struggle, emotional guilt, mm -hmm. and you know the stress is really. Those are the three things that most moms struggle every day. And I'm guessing, you know, Wanda, no, uh, especially with what happened with the uh, COVID and the and the quarantine and lockdown, lalong, lalong, it's it has really become a big deal right now for many moms. Now they used to talk to your office mates and kumare at least once a week. They got a chance have coffee, unload some stress, you know, all those things. And then, boom, suddenly you can't do that. Yeah. True. I mean, especially during COVID, right? When the school shifted from, I mean, from traditional to online, oh my God, mm -hmm. the first few months really was very difficult because the kids don't know a lot of technology yet. So there's a lot of struggle, you know, how, how do they learn? But lang, there's always a curve, right? If you look at it now, my kids are more techy than I am. Mm -hmm. So if I do have technological problems, they're the ones I have to call. But at the beginning, you know, when they were shifting to online school, there was a lot of drama, a lot of headache. <laughs> and also, you, know, you, you have that fear of what's going to happen, right? And the mothers are the emotional center of the family. Like to share lang, my husband got COVID last December. So you can imagine how much yung, talagang, you know, I, my husband, he did, he, I mean, he's always very healthy. And when, when he got sick, I really got scared. But at the same time, I have to be that strong person to make sure that I take care of him, to make sure that th that virus doesn't pass on to me, to my mom who is here with me and she's 72, and to my two children. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, that there's so much of responsibility um, to us moms to maintain the emotional well-being of the family. Because when we do that, then we can really hold the family together. Mm, absolutely. Now, with regards with you, with the people that you have helped, diba? Sabi mo, time has always been a challenge, right? And working moms, you know, one of the things is, of course, hindi lang yung taking care of their kids, but also yung kanilang relationship with their spouse, mm -hmm. right? At least, you know, from ako, I'm speaking, nasa kabilang side kami na Josel, yung husband eh, kayo yung wife eh, right? So any advice na bibigay mo, so for example, sa husband, na maaaring itong wife mo, hindi niya lang sinasabi, pero overwhelmed na siya, sasabog na siya. Yeah. Right? Is there anything that we could do? Or at least, maybe, you know, try to, to feel the, the situation na, hey, maybe you should talk to your wife. Is there something that we can do? And hopefully, you know, ma ma maramdaman man ng wife nila na, hey, you're not alone. We're all in this together. I think it's about, you know, the husband questioning the wife. Are you Okay. And also, understand to read between the lines. Because the problem with us also, women in general, especially wives, you know, we tend to carry a lot of loads, but we don't want to burden the husband also. So we might say, I'm okay. <laughs> but that okay will differ depending on the tone, <laughs> the delivery. I'm okay. What a problem? <laughs> so, uh, sabi, okay, ako. So, <laughs> I mean, I think... That is one thing. I mean, men and women are really different, right? I mean, we express so much in with our voice, with our body language. And I know men, kasi you don't have that gift to read it. Eh. So don't tell again ng We're commotion. terrible. We're, we're terrible at reading <laughs> body language. <laughs> True. That's actually that's that's how that's how we are all designed differently. Eh. And I think siguro lang for, for, for the husband, my tip is that when your wife is speaking, kasi that is also the communication. They said, men speak, I learned no, to 500 to 2,000 words a day. We women, we speak 2,000 to 10,000 words a day. Hindi naman katakata kayo? Ah, so you... Yeah, I mean, careful, super, John, careful. <laughs> careful I might get into trouble. Uh -oh. So Mother. for us kasi, for us to release the stress, we have to speak it out. 
Mm. So, eh, but also as we speak, we want to be heard, acknowledged, and understood. And sometimes, because men are too busy also in their own selves. And I know kasi my, men have is a waffle mind, eh, meaning one topic at a time, di ba? But mm. we women, we have spaghetti mind. Kaya nga when you fight, there's so many connections <laughs> na hindi naman. Na, so, ba, Giselle? Nakaka-relate ka ba, Giselle? Ganun ba yun? <laughs> Ito si Giselle. So, so kasi nga, um, so when we speak, if you just acknowledge, even with the sound, so kung, kung dire-diretso sa chika ng chika or galit siya, you just say, ah, mm. So, you, uh, you know, that sound itself is a validation that, oh, we're being heard, we're being understood. Yeah. Kasi, and, you know, you just, or if, you, if you cannot take us anymore, you know, find us a friend talaga. Really, women need friends. Kasi before, nga, they said, diba, women raise children through tribes and it was e- easier then. But now, we are so alone, right? I mean, we felt so inadequate ourselves. And, you know, having just a support of the husband to say na, I know, you're doing a good job. Because we always have, they said mothers are the most insecure being in the world. Oh, so, if, yeah. So if the husband can only say, you know, you're imperfectly perfect as you are, that's that's some, some that's a gift itself, right? To to hear that, and just nga yung pag mixasalita kami, just make us na ah, mm, hindi ka naman tata ng ako makikita. Talaga ko pieces ko na bangit mo na ano? Yung isip nila parang spaghetti. Eh. Alam niya tatawa mm. ganda ko eh. because once she starts, so for example, I ask her, okay, how do you go to this place, right? And then she start to give the directions and in about about a minute naalala niya na natatawa-tawa na ako just a few seconds because she knows she's terrible at giving directions she's like spaghetti nga it's like what that's like all. do I parang ganoon eh parang um that's that's a big lesson for me Giselle it has it, it re- resonates with me the way you described it that we're waffles and women are spaghetti uh, it Comes, uh, what comes to mind right now is a quotation from a wise man. A wise man once said to his wife, nothing, because he is a wise man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true, right? I mean, if you can save yourself a lot of trouble by being silent yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Knowing those, those things, I wanted to lead it to a question. Going to those factors that John asked, and it was magnificently identified time, the lack of time, and even the, the insecurities about fitting in that time and the emotions to, to make everyone feel magnificent. What are the symptoms that you see for, or of the moms that come to you and say, Wanda, I need your help? What do you see? You know, actually, if, if, a, if a mother or a woman is always sick, mm-hmm. that itself, that's the last manifestation. I mean, if you are emotionally, mentally unwell, the last resort really is you being sick all the time. So that's one. Second also, if you're unhappy. So if, you know, if your wife or if your partner is into retail shopping, because that is, the, it's a temporary feeler for you to be happy and satisfied. Eh? So, and also if, if you cannot sleep well at night, so sickness, lack of sleep, those are some of the symptoms eh, that people really go through. And you know, depression, diba? I mean, anxiety and depression, it has I mean, increased so much. Sabi nila, there's about 460 million who are depressing. And loneliness increased by 300%, especially last year. Wow. So, and you know, kasi nga, we women, we love to speak, diba? We love to socialize. <laughs> and alam din naman namin, I mean, you get tired speaking to your husband only. So you need another people. You know that you need somebody who, who who's, who's like you, who's like a friend and a family and a woman who can understand you. Just, you know, just air your emotions out. You know, that's that's what we did. Mm, I agree on that. Na mas, I don't know if it's just me or our situation, but she'd rather really more of like a social person. Ako parang more of homebody talaga from the beginning. I don't know why, like, you know, lumalabas din naman, but uh, my wife rather, you know, meet this friend and meet this friend and meet this friend. Ako lang, it's like, can I just stay home? Or I'm just gonna drop you off, all right? Bababa ko na lang siya. And then, you know, I just, but I, but yeah, I just uh, let her go, right? So I guess, tanggap na yun. Siguro one of those things, Josiana, no? na bilang isang mag-asawa, kinakailangan tayo mga lalaki, maintindihan natin, mga babae, gano'n. 
Right? Yung mga babae din naman, kinakailangan rin maintindihan ng mga lalaki na, hey, they are not maybe as social. Uh, you know, ako, misis, minsan si misis, inaasar ko dahil ang misis ko, pagka nagkaroon ng gathering, right? Yes, yung magkakaibigan. Never yung unang magpapaalam. Na, hey, bye guys, we have to go. Okay, sorry, nice, nice meeting everyone. No, it's like, it's like, parang sa anya, it's like a mortal sin. <laughs> She has to be the last. We have to be the last couple to be the house. So I guess dahil nga yung yung pagiging social socialize nila, socialization nila sa so parang ganun. You mentioned that yung pagpaalaman, yung paalam sa mga party. Talagang sila ang dapat. And I agree with that na it's it's good for the relationship. What I also notice is that uh, that's the aspect of the social, no? The social aspect that we need to be relating to each other. And I I like what you said when you said that it takes a village to raise children. No, that's an old American Indian saying. And currently, medyo mahirap, di ba? Mahirap gawin. We, we can't go to to friends' house or titas and titos to meet with them. So, mm-hmm. what other than virtual? No, kaya ngam bag misis ko pag may virtual get together, I I make sure that she has that 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 glass of wine or the cheese and then everything that. Then I could, I'd be left alone with my Netflix and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I like what you said about that. Yeah. yeah. Now, the key of what you just said, of course, in time, you know, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. So, uh, Wanda, can you give us, um, you know, sabi natin maybe some, some um, helpful tips that they can apply uh, from, from, from this interview. So, let's just say I'm a wife. I feel overwhelmed. Okay. I can I can relate to what Wanda's talking about. That's really me. Just pretend, you know, just for example, for mga na- nakikinig sa atin ngayon, where should I start? Like, how can I uh, how can I get started with, 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 with something? Ano ba yung dapat kong first step kong gagawin? The second step, and third step. And then hopefully, you know, ma-unload ko to mga stress ato. I think if I always coach and ask, the, you know, any person I speak to, my question first is, what do you fear the most now? Kasi, you know, there's a lot of things in our mind, right? And especially moms, there's so many roles and there's, there's so many things we wanted to do. But we also need to first acknowledge that we can we cannot do anything and we cannot be in everybody to, you know, we cannot be everybody to everybody who needs us. So the question I always ask them is, ask, you know, knowing yourself is really the gift. It's the best gift you can give to yourself and to your family. Ask yourself this question first. What do you fear the most? Because the reverse of that is what you really wanted. So like, for example, for, for my scenario, that if, if you ask me before, what is your greatest fear? So my fear is, you know, being sick all the time. So meaning, if I reverse that, I wanted to be healthy. So meaning, number one, I need to focus on my health first. Because I was always very busy with everything, but in my health always takes the back seat. But when I started to invest in my health, that is when the things changed for me. So first, knowing your priority is, is key. Second, it's also knowing your values. What do you value the most? Mm. Like when I value family, love, and service. And when I was working and when I was misaligned, you know, I was, I'm, I'm an auditor by profession, mm-hmm. but I'm also an optimist by, you know, by design, by God's design. So as an auditor, I was always looking for what's wrong. And I was an optimist. So there was a lot of misalignment in mm-hmm. my life. And if I was not able to channel that before, that led to my sickness. But when it was made clear to me that family, love, and service is, you know, my core value. And when I started to do coaching and training you know that is when the energy flowed on the different when i became so healthy without you know without medication <laughs> yeah. nga, i was operating in my own design That's and right. according to my value so and also number three if they manage they i i use for this it's, it's, it's also the eisenhower box right of time management so in terms of mothers every day ask yourself what's the best use of your time and define lang what's your top three and then define what can you what do you need to do what can you delay what can you delete and what can you delegate because the chaos of moms is wanting to do everything at the same time and the best in everything that we do and then we burn ourselves in the process for being inadequate 
<laughs> and insufficient for for not doing that. So we we've, we've been so hard on ourselves. Eh. So yon time management talaga is about knowing what what what's your number one priority. Time management of doing, delaying, deleting, and delegating tasks, and also nga you know really also giving some time for yourself as well. That mm-hmm. that's very important. Yeah, definitely, especially. As an adult, ano, we tend to think that we should finish everything in our plate. You know, like we have unlimited to-do list, right? It's like every day there's another, oh, you have an appointment with a dentist, right? Or I have to talk to their teacher. And then, of course, you have your job, you have your business, you have career, you know, you have, you have, I have to work on my retirement funds, right? Uh, educational plan, nila, finances. Of course, I have to take care of my health. I have to go to the gym. And, you know, all those things. Eh? And you're right. Number one, of course, is priority. And of course, in four Ds, yourself, maganda, no? Uh, one, th- one thing that you can do, tama ba? delay. And then, uh, what's the third one? Is it um, delete. delegate? Delete. And the fourth, delegate. Right? So, deletion. <laughs> Ako, in my case, I'd rather, I, of course, importante lahat. I would like to focus also on deletion, ano? Because minsa may mga, di ba sabi ng anila Jocelyn, ano? Hindi naman all all tasks are e- uh, created equal, eh. right? There's Pero, only these tasks that will only produce your little results. Well, at the same mm-hmm. time, these tasks might be small but produce your biggest results, right? So something this you wanna sit down, write on paper. What are the things that you need to do? do among all these things, and then you apply me on four Ds. Uh, binanggit kanina ni Coach Wanda. And uh, you know, there you go, one one step at a time, one day at a time, and you will start to feel you, you um, uh, stress. So one of the things, uh, Jocelyn ano, and Coach Wanda, when I was an employee, yung sinasabi mo kanina ng misaligned, yung values sa akin yun yun. Eh. For like over eight years ako ng empleyado, nakikita ko talagang hindi ako aligned to become an employee. But you know you. But the thing is, I don't know. What should I do? It's like everyone must must have a job, right? I don't want to be a jobless. I'm not lazy. And then dun ko narilas yung entrepreneurship and all. Dun ko rin naramdaman yung what you're feeling right now, Wanda. You know, yung the freedom, the power. You have more control. You can sleep better. You know that okay, this is what I am called to do, right? Just tell any same experience, ba? <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. The corporate life is. Great, no? Great mm. pay. Uh, the benefits are are wonderful. However, tama, meron mga instances that uh, there you you will feel that there's a disconnect, an incongruence with the things that you do and mm-hmm. what you want to happen, including even the uh, what we talked about in last the coaching session that we had, the imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. Whether you mm-hmm. like it or not, you will feel somewhat. You know, do I know this? Do I really know this? Somebody is much better than me in this knowledge. Yeah. But that's that's a, a great thing to understand that the four Ds that and and also I, I'm leading to this question that I was meaning to ask Anina pa. Uh, the four Ds is also me being reminded of the book if you're familiar with the book by Marie Kondo, the uh, art of the uh, art of is, you mean, Yeah, yeah, I see. You mean oh, Japanese? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When you, you minimalize, you know, yeah, I was yeah, kidding yeah. my wife, no, no, she bought that book. And, you know, uh, slowly things got to be minimal. And then when I was looking for the book, nakakalat lang yung libro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tease her about that all the time yeah. because that's that's one thing to organize your brain. That's now, here's right. the question, yeah. Wanda. I've been wanting to ask this, Coach Wanda. There will be women who are watching us right now, listening to us right this very moment if, once we release this. They will be asking, hey... I want to take the path of John and Wanda when they decided to leave corporate. Two things. First thing, leave corporate and do my own stuff. Something that will make my heart sing. And two, I want to stay in corporate, but I want to be a healthier person in corporate. What do you advise these two types of people? One that wants to leave and the other one that wants to have a better relationship with their corporate uh, affairs. No? Career, yeah. Career. Yeah. To be honest, I'm still working now here in Dubai. Because when we came back in 2019, um, I really had to, of course, visas in Dubai. It's that easy. So I'm still working now, but on the side, 
you know, I'm doing Working Moms Academy. So my, my advice there is, number one, you know, you find something that will make your heart sing. Because the truth is that your organization will always be different. I mean, in terms of your personal values, right? And in one of the training that I do, it's called Workplace Culture at um, workplace attitude value enhancement. That is where you try to understand what is the values of the organization and what do what do I value? And then you try to find yourself in that space. Mm-hmm. You know, where do at least I find an alignment in that? Because if you could at least be clear every day, why am I here in the office? Why do I do what I do in the office? And then similarly, where do I, because this is where you are now and where do you want to be? And, you know, you can always create something. I know, I know John, right? I mean, in his story before I've read how he has transitioned. I mean, for me in 2016, it was abrupt from, I really left my job. Then I became a stay at home. Then I started my company and I was very okay. Kaya nga when I left the Philippines, I had I was actually heavy hearted. I was telling God, I thought this was it because I was able to get my accreditation. I'm also a trainer and mentor for the Department of Trade and Industry and also I'm a trainer for the Central Bank of the Philippines. So when I left the Philippines in 2019, I was like, I already won these clients, which are very difficult as per government, Philippine standards, you know. But then I had to leave and go back to corporate because of that earthquake and attempted robbery that happened on the same day. But, you know, as I look back today, I think there's you can always reinvent yourself. And there's nothing and no one that can stop you from creating something that you love. So if you do have a job now, if you want to shift to something else, you can start now and, and you know, slowly do some steps to really make things happen. And, you know, find something that make your heart sing because that will fuel you also. You know, to, co- to just continue living, you know, you, you sleep in peace and wake up in joy. If you can find, find that balance, bliss, and meaning of, of why you're doing what you do. Mm-hmm. I was like thinking the other day, hindi kaya ito na yung tinatawag natin midlife crisis. Diba? Parang, parang, you know, you're like at a certain yun. age. You know? like, <laughs> pero minsan niniisip ko, maybe crisis is not the right word. Right? Maybe it's just like, you know, if you reach a certain age, you find like, you, you, meron ka na kasing some years or if not uh, decades you look back something that you miss and then now you're like halfway in something that you want to accomplish right so it's like you know some people ako kasi nagsimula ako somewhere in uh, again it's not a midlife crisis one day no and yourself pero i started somewhere like early 30s so it was like it's not like a midlife because relatively they're still young compared yeah. sa you know typical a midlife pero nandun eh, doon ako nag-step up eh. Um, I was like, okay, my job is okay and you know, I'm relatively okay, happy, wala naman kaming problema, asawa ko, what not. But I was like, yun nga, misalignment eh. So I guess one of the message or lesson na makukuha natin, we can learn from Coach Wanda, is, um, you know, if there's like a calling in your heart, just like something seems to be missing, right? Pursue it instead of ignoring it you know i guess that's one of the things uh you know because well everyone are working corporate right or like oh my parents are from corporate then maybe i should retire in a corporate man you know something that you wanna wanna look into right coach joseph that's true and you are not alone if you decide because you have coach john and coach wanda Who's yeah. going to help you in that transition? Right? That's mm. right. Perfect. John, my terminology, mm. Don, it's quarter mm. life crisis. Quarter life. Because yeah. see, there is midlife and there's also quarter life. The quart- uh, you know, When I was doing my research and when I found that, I said, ah, ito rin pala yung pinagdaan ko. It actually, mm. quarter life starts from 20 up to 35, I think, or 36. Because oh. the midlife na is 40s and above, di ba? So at right. 20 to 20 to 39 is quarter life. A lot of people are actually there. Mm, so a lot, that, a lot. And uh, that's one of the things that Joseph and I are helping out some uh, Filipinos is you know to 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 find this this thing that you know you you need to say in your mind that will make your heart sing, right? That will make you excited to getting up. You know, meeting these people. I I don't know. I believe coaches is one of those things. Kaya meron kaming one of the program namin ni Joseph, yung well-fed coach. It's like, you know, this one of the, 
one of those businesses that it's really unique, right? Unique in a way that you can really have a big impact in our society, have fun helping a lot of people, and then also make you good money, right? It's like not a lot of business can offer you such opportunities. And that is why this we have this video and podcast as well, right, Joseph? Mismo. And it mm-hmm. resonates. Again, nung sinabi ni Coach Wanda, what she heard, maybe it's a divine providence or the voice from heaven that says, serve now, serve now, serve now. Mm-hmm. This is it. This is it. Service. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Coach Wanda, any last words sa ating pong mga moms who are right, right now like... Sh- yun niya, nakakaramdam ng stress and maybe they sometimes they also feel alone. Any last words? And of course, uh, you know, how can they reach out to you? And uh, yeah, go ahead. I just want to tell moms that if you're undergoing stress and burnout or if you're feeling unhappy or empty, the, the good news about that is everything that you need is available within you. So if you just deep dive, you know, within, ask your heart, what is your heart telling you to do? How can you turn your pain into purpose? How can you be of service to others? How can you grow? Then if you start asking yourself those questions, you will start really to move from burnout to bliss. And someday, you know, your, your pain could really be turned into a purpose and your your burdens are going to be a blessing to you. And for those who want to overcome stress and burnout, I would like to invite them to join Working Moms Academy's Facebook group. We do have live webinars, live coaching um, every week. And also we are launching a group coaching program together with myself. And I have coaches from, you know, a lot of mothers have joined me in this movement and mission. I have coaches from um, Germany, from UK, from UAE, from Malaysia, from Australia, from India. And together we're going to help mothers, you know, overcome the stress that they have through group coaching. So please reach out. And also in June, I'm launching this LinkedIn personal branding for moms with Virginia about she is one of the top link in strategies in the Philippines and in Asia. So if they if that is something that resonates with them, please get in touch with me. And yeah. for one-on-one coaching, I, I do very limited. I mean, my time, I only take like one client a month. <laughs> mm-hmm. But for group coaching, that is something that I find more powerful as well as training. So just do reach out to me because we do a lot of training for Working Moms Academy. Also. So Working Moms Academy, is this a Facebook group or a Facebook page? Or, See, uh, work, working Moms Academy, we do have a, a, a website. Go to workingmomsacademy.com. We have okay. a Facebook group and group we have a well. Facebook page also. Okay. So and you uh, just find social media, naman, do, uh, do you have like a social media, like your personal account that we can? Like, is it yes, possible you can for you to me. message you? Ah, sige. I'll send that. Um, you, you can just look for my name, Wandalin Tan Kalupig, but the best way to reach to me other than Facebook is LinkedIn. Um, okay. I'm most active on LinkedIn. So, and John, Jose, if you can also be one of my guests, actually, I do LinkedIn Live. I'm the first Filipina LinkedIn Live broadcaster. Because for LinkedIn, it's kind of limited, right? The who can yeah. go live. So, right. I, I'm the first one who got that license to go on live. For, nice. Kaya, I hope I can invite you for Father's Day naman for June. Absolutely. Honored. Very honored. Very much honored. Absolutely. Yeah. What I... I just wanted to say I was very happy to have a conversation, this chat with you. Kasi, number one, hindi mo sinabi ang number one stress ng, wa- ng mothers ay ang kanilang husbands. We are not... <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> but we are their way to their bliss. Yeah. <laughs> Alam mo yun, John, di ba? The last say should always be us. Sa atin ang say and it should always be in my case. <laughs> Yeah, yes. We're just trying to make your life colorful, di ba? Sabi nga nila, anong saya ng pelikula kung walang kontrabida? And that's our role. <laughs> <laughs> Yun ang aming role, right? Mga mga Paquito Diaz. Alam na yung edad eh, no? Paquito Diaz, Max Alvarado. Paquito Diaz pa. Paquito Diaz. Tama-tama dyan, ang misis ko, artistahin eh. Sabi ko sa mga kaibigan ko, artistahin din naman ako, mukha lang ako kontrabida o komedyante. <laughs> Yun, having said that, hindi po maraming maraming salamat, Coach Wanda. Thank you. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's Day, Coach Wanda. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day din sa lahat ng manunood at nanunood. Oh, yan. Maraming maraming salamat po once again. We appreciate that you join us and hopefully you can join us in our next episode. Right, Coach Joseph? Coach. 
Very good. Thank you. I'm happy to have had a conversation with Coach Wanda. Thank you. Yeah. Muli po maraming salamat and uh, see you guys in our next episode. Have a great day.